Welcome. Let's launch right into it. What is a vector? Well, a vector, quite simply, is just a shift. Most people don't say this, but I'm saying it. For example, imagine an earthquake hits a town and all points in town move two units east and one unit north. That means the whole, every point in the town has shifted by this amount. So this point here is shifted by this red amount. This point here is by shifted the same thing. This point here is also shifted by the same quantity, shifted by the same quantity. Every point in town shifts the same amount in the same direction. That is all a vector is. A vector is represented by an arrow. For example, any one of these arrows represents the shift, in which case this vector represents the shift two to the right and one up. And uh, that's it. But no particular vector, no particular arrow is the vector. It just represents the total shift everywhere. Every point moves the same amount. Uh, vectors are usually denoted with the letter V. In a textbook, they're done in bold font, which is very hard to draw on, on page. Um, what I do in the page is underscore it. So I might call this vector V, and the notation for this is, well, people use, usually use angle brackets, two to the right and one up. If I was to draw a second vector, maybe I'll do it in green, I might call it W, I might have the vector say uh, three, negative four. What does that mean? That means every point in town's shifted three units to the right, and four units down. Here's the total shift. There's the vector w. I don't mean that particular arrow, I mean everywhere in town is being shifted by this amount. That's it. That's all a vector is. Nothing more than that. Most people say that a vector is a quantity with both magnitude and direction. Um, I, I can make sense of that too. Uh, for example, if I look at my vector 3, negative 4, that is the w, I guess the magnitude makes sense. It looks like a little right triangle. I can use Pythagoras' theorem and see that this vector, this arrow here, has length 5. So I might say the magnitude of w, and I use absolute value signs, usually a double set of them, is 5. Um, it certainly has a direction. I know which way I'm shifting. So in some sense, that's, that's right. It has a magnitude and it has a direction. People might say that wind velocity is a vector because each particle of air is shifting by a certain amount in a certain amount of time. All right. Let me just go through some very basic operations and vectors. Uh, it's not confusing. High school tends to make this very confusing, and I don't know why it's so hard. What does it mean, and let's just think it through to, back in terms of earthquakes, to go, whoops, need my pen again, to talk about V plus W. That means, suppose my town is hit, first hit with a vector V, that is, everything shifts two places right and one place up. And then later, the whole town is hit by a second, vector, a second earthquake. That means everything moves three places over and four places down. What's the, what's, oops, I lost my picture. What's the resultant shifter from that? Well, I could say, after those two earthquakes, every point in town has moved this amount. I'd say it's the vector vector V plus vector W. Now, algebraically, this is very easy to analyze. Clearly, V moves everything two units right, and then later W W moves everything three units right. This moves everything five units to the right. And upwards, V moves everything one unit up. W moves everything four units down. It's a net effect of three units down. So I could say that uh, algebraically, the sum of two vectors is just add the components, the x components, and add the y components. And geometrically, the sum of two vectors is just do one vector followed by another. Look what happens if a point's hit by earthquake V followed by earthquake W. There's a little curiosity here. Um, it is very obvious algebraically that if I look at the x components, 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2, and 1 plus negative 4 is the same as negative 4 plus 1. So algebraically, it is as clear as daylight that v plus w should be the same as w plus v. That's not as obvious geometrically. It's fun to think of it. So instead of being earthquake v first and w second, why don't I take this point and hit it with earthquake w first? It must move something like this. And then hit it with earthquake v. It must move something like that. Well, actually, you can see I've just made a little parallelogram. v plus w geometrically is the same place as w plus v. So geometrically, vectors commute under addition, and algebraically, they do so as well. OK, here comes the complications. And this is where high school curriculum gets confusing. I'm a mathematician. I like to make things as simple as possible, even if it means doing things that are naughty and technically bad. For example, here's a point A. Here's a point B. Suppose I tell you the coordinates of A are actually 2, 10, and the coordinates of B are actually, I don't know, I'm making it up, 8, 12. I can think of these two points as representing a shift. What is the shift to go from A to B? 
and most people would denote that as a vector from A to B. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that particular arrow, just the shift represented by that arrow. Well, clearly, doo -doo -doo -doo, it's this difference of x coordinates, 8 minus 2 is 6, and followed by this difference of y coordinates, 12 minus, two is, uh, 12 minus 10 is 2. So this is the vector 6 minus 2, but I'm going to be really bad. What I've actually done here is taken the coordinates of the point B and subtracted them from the coordinates of the point A. So I'm going to say the vector from A to B is just the point B minus the point A. And now teachers are screaming at me because it makes no sense to actually add or subtract points. However, I'm not subtracting points. What I mean by this really bad notation, and by being so bad it's actually good, do what this represents component-wise. This is actually the right thing to do. It says take the components of B and subtract them from them the components of A. And that's what I did. I took this 8 and subtracted this 2, and I got the 6. I took this 12 and I subtracted this, this 10, and I got the 2. So actually, this is valid mathematical, represents something mathematically valid, even though teachers will tell me you cannot subtract points, don't do that. I'm going to do it. And the reason I want to do it, whoops, because I can make so much of mathematics simpler. For example, uh, let's go back to uh, my pen. If I've got two points, A and B, and suppose I wish to work out their midpoint, a point halfway between the two. Well, I'm going to be really bad. To get to the midpoint, start at A, and then I have to add to that, shift it halfway from A to B. There, that's the midpoint. The midpoint is given by that formula. Well, what does this mean? Okay, I'm going to be really bad with my notation. This is the point A plus half of, now if you remember, the shift from A to B was given by B minus A. And if I simplify this mathematically, I get half of B and I get A minus half of A. So I'm basically getting all of A and all of B, each divided by 2. So I claim the midpoint of two points is given by this formula. Now this makes no sense in terms of geometry. I don't know what it means to add two points together and divide by 2. However, what I'm really saying is the mathematics behind the scenes, component-wise, is actually valid. And I'm right. If we look at this, uh, let's give some actual numbers here. Suppose A was, say, 2, 7, and B was, say, I don't know, 8, 5. Then this formula says, add the components of A and B together, divide by 2. So I'm going to take 2 and 8 for the x components is 10, divide by 2 gives me 5. And add the components, the y components together, 7 plus 5 is 12, divide by 2 is 6. And that is indeed the valid midpoint. And the reason why I love this is that why stop at midpoints? Uh, my board's getting messy, forgive me for this. Suppose I wanted the point here that's one third of the way along. Well, I can find it. Here's the one third point. Start at A and move one third along the shift from A to B. So that means this is A plus one third of B minus A. So this is actually two thirds of A minus plus one third of B. There's the formula for the what the word is, tri-point, the first tri-point. Lots of fun to be had. In fact, thinking of vectors this way is a grand way of doing so much geometry. It actually makes all of geometry much easier when you come to these sorts of uh, formulas and so forth. And if you really are worried about me abusing notation this way by adding subtracting points, I am actually valid in the end, because another way to think of points in the planes is as complex numbers. And one can actually add and subtract complex numbers legitimately. So if you want to think of points as complex numbers, then everything I'm doing here is absolutely valid mathematically. Even my notation, which is bad, is actually valid now. All right, that's a little taste of what vectors are. I would suggest you can play with equations of line this way. The place to go to get all this material is volume two. Um, actually, volume five, when you get to parametric equations, this is a good way to think in terms of parametric equations. What's the equation of a line? Best to think in terms of vectors. All right, thank you very much.